Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. I've never seen it quite this high, but back in 86, it was up here quite a ways. Homeowners return to see the destruction in Midland firsthand. The new images that we are getting today are devastating. And a senseless killing in Detroit. A four-year-old is dead from a drive-by shooting. Hear from his heartbroken family. But we begin this noon with the coronavirus update as Governor Whitmer shares her plan for reopening more of Michigan's economy. Her announcement today is big for retail shopping. It is a very busy news day here at noon. Thank you for joining us. The other big story is President Trump lands in Michigan less than two hours from now, while Governor Whitmer is easing more restrictions. Medical and dental offices, retail stores and auto dealership showrooms can reopen next week with strict new safety measures in place and gatherings of up to 10 people are now allowed immediately and just in time for the Memorial Holiday weekend. Let's get to business editor Rod Maloney joining us now live to break down what it all means for Metro Detroit businesses and restaurants and, and residents. Yeah, hi Rhonda. You know, uh, we're here in Belleville and uh, check out this uh, strip mall that we're uh, at right now. You got the liquor store, party store open, the pizza place is open and now starting next week, the orthodontic and the dental place behind me here will be opening up. That's according to the governor this morning who uh, came out with a bit of a surprise. Uh, there was not an expectation that there would be this much activity this morning, uh, but here we are. So let's take a look at what she's done. Effective immediately, the governor says 10 person or less gatherings are now permitted, but she has to has the caveat that it has to be done socially distant six feet apart, wearing the mask, uh, hand washing and the like. Then the changes to her stay at home order are effective on Tuesday the 26th by appointment only. Retail businesses can be open and auto showrooms can be open as well. But uh, there are also uh, some rather extensive social distancing rules that have to go along with that. It's not going to be uh, just, you know, everybody uh, out and in the stores. Uh, the retail businesses will have the limit of 10 persons in the store. Um, and then on the 29th, which is a, a week from tomorrow, veterinary services, non-emergency medical and dental services will be opening up. Let's hear from the governor what she had to say today. This will not look like business as usual, though it will start to look a little more normal. Employees will have to wear personal protection equipment and maintain social distancing to the best of their abilities. We all know Memorial Day is approaching fast, and I want to remind everyone to be safe. You can take the boat out. You can have a beer and grill some burgers or have a water balloon fight with your children. But please remember to stay safe. Now, not included in all of this are restaurants, bars, and, uh, and uh, hair salons, barber shops uh, at this point. And the governor uh, says that she will be talking more about Memorial Day weekend, uh, probably in the next day or so, about where things are. But as it stands right now, some changes, big ones in the stay-at-home order. And uh, a lot of people certainly happy about that. Reporting live in Belleville, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Oh, yes, they are. And getting prepared. Rod, thank you. In a couple of hours, President Trump will be here in Metro Detroit. He's visiting Ford Motor Company's Rawsonville plant in Ypsilanti. Attorney General Dana Nessel is asking the president to wear a mask, calling it a legal responsibility. So far, President Trump has not said whether or not he will wear one, but has not ever worn one publicly. The White House says that this afternoon's visit is to thank the Ford workers who have been making ventilators and other businesses here in Michigan that have helped by making personal protective equipment during the pandemic. And we are waiting to hear back from the president's team to see if he may be making a stop by areas in Midland that have been devastated by flooding. He said there's a chance he might. Our other top story, a four-year-old child is killed in a senseless shooting on Detroit's west side overnight. His name is Nathaniel Roby Townsend, and he died when someone fired shots into his family's home on Burwood Street near Seven Mile in Wyoming after midnight last night. Grant Herms joins us now live with more. And Grant, I know that you are hearing from his grief-stricken family. Yeah, we'll hear from his grandmother in just a second. A very sad scene out here, a very active scene still. You can see MSP out here 
with the evidence dogs combing for evidence. This guy behind me here specifically looking for shell casings across the street. But the house hit last night was actually the other way across the street from where that evidence dog is. You can see the small chairs there that would have been Nathaniel's. That house there, the main house hit by gunfire. According to police, the shooting happened just after midnight last night. Family here on scene says the children were in bed when someone drove by and opened fire, hitting four-year-old Nathaniel Roby Townsend. Nathaniel was rushed to the hospital but never made it. He succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead when they arrived at the hospital. His grandmother, Pansy Glaster, said Nathaniel had gotten up for a late-night snack and was walking toward the back of the house where the rest of the kids were when those shots rang out, blowing apart the windows and walls of the home. Nathaniel was struck. We thought he had already made it to the back, but he never made it to the back with the rest of the kids. He was shot. He was shot. They said he was shot in the head. Grandma didn't even look at him because I couldn't see my baby like that. Now, since then, police have been talking to neighbors. They've been going in and out of some of the houses here, including this house just behind me here where there's a clear security camera. They were not sure if that's involved yet. Police do think they have the possible vehicle of the shooter. They're identifying that as a white GMC minivan, but clearly there are still a lot of details that they're still trying to put together. Anybody with information is asked to call Detroit police or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. On Detroit's west side, Grant Herms, Local 4. So incredibly sad. Hopefully they can track down who's responsible for this. Grant, thank you. And also this noon, a three-year-old girl has been shot while in a car with her mother on Detroit's east side. Police say that the girl was sitting in the car seat when she got caught in the crossfire of a shootout. It happened in a neighborhood near I-94 and Van Dyke last night. She was rushed to the hospital and is in temporary serious condition. Police are asking for anyone with information to come forward. Now to Midland. The water levels are slowly receding in the Midland area, and we are getting a better look at the utter devastation in all of these different communities that have been left behind from the flooding. Sky 4 was overhead in the Edenville and also Sanford areas today. And take a look at this. Just piles of debris that have taken over homes, and these beautiful lakefront houses are no more. But much of downtown Midland is still under several feet of water. The area flooded when two dams gave way, sending water down river. The Titipawasi River should be in flood stage until Sunday. This morning, Governor Whitmer said that she has reached out to the president for federal help. Last night, I sent a letter to President Trump requesting a federal emergency declaration to ensure that we have the support we need to protect Midland area residents. I'm hopeful that as he is coming to our state today, I think it would be great if he signed that emergency declaration while he's here in Michigan today, and that is my fervent hope. Sanford's village president says that things are so unsafe there that the National Guard is being brought in to just close it off. Some people who were forced to leave everything in a moment's notice on Tuesday to evacuate did get the chance to go back and assess the damage this morning. Larry Spruill also in Sanford for us this noon. It's really unimaginable there, and I know you're realizing that firsthand, Larry. We are, Rhonda. As you can see, there is still a lot of water just right over there, a lot of flooding and damage as well. We are standing on Saginaw Road, which allows people to take this road into Sanford. But as you can see, the road is no more. It is completely washed out. A lot of people I talk to say this just does not look like home. And it started coming up. It was like an inch a minute. All day Thursday, people here in Sanford are seeing the damage that's left for the first time. Roadblock signs cover Sanford, blocking access to the city. But the main barrier is this, this bridge that washed away. We saw damage all over the Midland area after the Edenville Dam broke and the Sanford Dam was breached late Tuesday night. About 10,000 people forced to leave their homes. This is pretty devastating. Hilton Headley and his family, just one of the 10,000 who left, not knowing if they'll have anything to return to. Thursday, floodwaters still cover their neighborhood, so his son and daughter-in-law hopped in this canoe to see what's left of their home. This will be the first time they've seen it. I've never seen it quite this high, but... Back in 86, it was up here quite a ways. Just up the street in Midland, Phil Stauffer is checking out his home after evacuating. 
Most of his home is okay, but his garage was flooded. We are incredibly blessed. You know, at the end of the day, they are just things and they can be replaced. Now there is some good news. Emergency officials say that the river did crest at 35 feet and right now flood levels are at 33 feet. Now, now the question remains, how can people recover? What will they, what will they do now? I'm working on that part of the story coming up tonight at five. We're live in Sanford this afternoon. Larry Spruill, Local 4. All right, Larry, thank you. We certainly feel for all of those homeowners there. We have some breaking news on the college admissions scandal. Actress Lori Laughlin and her husband will plead guilty to charges that do include prison time. As part of a plea deal, the couple will plead guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud and mail fraud, and prosecutors will dismiss money laundering and bribery charges. Laughlin has agreed to serve two months in prison, and her husband will serve five months. This deal still needs to be approved by the judge. Much more had today at noon, including our own Brandon Rue on a beautiful Thursday. It is today, tomorrow. What about the big holiday weekend? Warmer? Does that mean stormier? We'll take a look right here next. Oh, we hope not, Brandon. See you here in a few. Also ahead, another high profile prisoner connected to President Trump is set to be released from prison because of the coronavirus. That's next.